Today, I wanted to discuss a somewhat intriguing discovery of a gravitational wave that suggests a collision between a somewhat unusual object and a neutron star. A detection that was made back in 2023, but that was finally analyzed and released in a scientific study that as always you can find in the description below. And though one of the objects here seems to be a typical neutron star, the second object seems to be really strange. It falls into what's known as the mass gap, representing a mass of certain objects that at first scientists thought could not exist, but now that several have been discovered, represent objects that we currently cannot explain, or essentially we have no idea how they formed, or even what they possibly are. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss this discovery and the study in a little bit more detail, focusing on what we think this probably is, and why this might be kind of important. But I guess first, a quick reminder of how all of this works and how all of this is discovered. So now, after a few years of detections, we know that many different dense objects, as they orbit each other, tend to produce certain gravitational waves. Waves of space-time itself, that though invisible to us, can be detected if you build a machine large enough to have two lasers intersecting and producing a kind of an interference. And if something nudges them just a little bit, they'll actually start producing interference patterns detectable by precise measurements here on Earth. And because each of these lasers is approximately 4 kilometers long, they're able to detect vibrations whose wavelengths are either similar or shorter than that. And though these vibrations could be technically formed by, for example, someone jumping next to them and essentially shaking the planet, since we have at least four of these devices in four separate locations, two in the US, one in Japan, and one in Italy, by having the same detection at the same time from several locations, we can only make one conclusion. It must have come from outer space. And the only thing that can actually do this is if the Earth itself starts to basically oscillate and contract and expand as these space-time waves pass through it. In theory, it would kind of look like this, but this is dramatically exaggerated. These waves can only move our planet by something similar in size to a typical atom. But today we know that this is definitely something that happens, and it even happens pretty much at all times. There are different types of wavelengths, and they all seem to come from different sources. But the ones LIGO, Virgo, and CARGA facilities can discover are usually coming from smaller black holes, or neutron stars. Various dense objects on a collision course whose orbits shrink because of interactions through gravitational waves until they finally merge into a single object. And so, in the last few years, a lot of different objects have been discovered on a collision course with some of them sort of unusual. You can learn about some of them in the description below. But this time, once again, we have something somewhat mysterious, something very difficult to explain. It is once again a merger, and a merger producing extremely specific gravitational waves, but both objects here are relatively small. One of them seems to have a mass of a neutron star. Anywhere from 1.2 to maybe 2 solar masses, so not actually that massive, but definitely a compact object. But the second object was a little bit strange. It was about 2.5 to maybe 4.5 solar masses, and that's where the mystery kind of starts. This is literally in the middle of the mass gap. Too massive to be a neutron star, and too small to be a typical black hole. And to be more specific, Recent studies have actually calculated that the most massive neutron star you can possibly have is about 2.3 solar masses, whereas the least massive black hole produced through a supernova is usually at least 5 solar masses. Yet here we have an object right in the middle of that. Extremely unlikely to be a neutron star, even if it's spinning really fast, and unlikely to be a black hole produced by a supernova, at least not according to modern physics. And all of this relatively far away. 650 million light years away from planet Earth. But this detection was not super surprising, because technically it's not the first time. The one discovered back in 2019 was also somewhat unusual and also possibly in the mass gap. Here this object was about 2.5 to maybe 2.7 solar masses, so possibly something very similar. And that of course implies that these collisions seem to be not rare at all. Whatever this is, it seems to be a type of a new object. Although in this case, it could still be a neutron star if it was spinning really, really fast. But that's maybe beside the point. The point is that these objects seem to be real. Likewise, there's another mass gap at a much larger mass, specifically in hundreds of solar masses. And that same year, in 2019, the researchers found two separate black holes, both in that massive mass gap, colliding and creating something even more massive. 
in the process of releasing approximately 9 solar masses in pure energy, basically making that detection the most powerful ever observed. Although that collision was unusual and even more extreme for several other reasons. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. But the obvious question in this case, in this detection is, so what exactly is this other object? And if it is a black hole, where exactly did it come from? With one immediate study coming out not so long ago, suggesting that this is maybe a primordial black hole. A black hole that was basically born in the beginning of the universe, during the inflation period, where a lot of energy over densities suddenly combined into tiny black holes with different types of masses. And if this is a primordial black hole, that's actually a really big discovery. It would imply that these black holes exist everywhere, and they could potentially explain dark matter, and even various anomalies we observe right here in the solar system. As you might remember, there was even a study trying to explain the effects from Planet 9 as a potential primordial black hole right here in the solar system, somewhere on the outskirts. And so confirming an existence of primordial black holes would be a huge deal. But right now this is not a confirmation because it could have been produced in other ways. It actually could have been a result of a merger of two separate neutron stars before this recent collision with the third one. Or in other words, if we have two neutron stars and they collide into a larger object, they will almost always form a black hole. This is due to a very specific critical gravitational mass known as the Oppenheimer limit. And that's around 2.3 solar masses. Above this, everything turns into a black hole. And so following this, once it already became a smaller black hole, a third neutron star, possibly in the same orbit, or maybe even from somewhere else, formed another collision and a much larger object in the process. And though some neutron star collisions can actually produce a supermassive neutron star, at least for some time, before it stops spinning and collapses into a black hole, in this case the final mass was already too great and so they must have become a black hole almost right away, while also very likely resulting in a typical kilonova, the explosion that produces all of the heavier elements in the universe. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. But because of this detection, we now know that this particular mass gap maybe is not a mass gap after all, or basically is a mass gap in terms of our theories. We just don't have an explanation for this yet, but because two such objects have already been discovered, it means that these are pretty common. Although since in this case, no physical explosion was detected from this region, the collision must have been very sudden, with the neutron star basically just getting swallowed almost completely. But luckily for us, we'll have even more discoveries, possibly in the next few years. And that's because by 2025, another facility is coming online, this time in India, that's going to be joining the collaboration. And by having five such facilities in five spots on the entire planet, it becomes extremely easy to triangulate the location for each of these events. And so we're probably going to be detecting dozens of these pretty much every month, with more mysteries uncovered in the process, and more importantly, a much larger facility that's actually going to be in space, known as LISA, has now been approved for construction as well, and might become operational, possibly in the next decade. And this one will change everything. You will be able to detect really massive gravitational waves, and uncover a tremendous amount of mysteries that we cannot even imagine yet. But when it comes to gravitational waves and mysteries, there are definitely quite a lot. You can actually learn about another one, detected by using pulsars, in one of the videos in the description, with that one basically suggesting that the entire universe seems to be vibrating. Why? Well, we don't really know. But anyway, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos, and until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining in channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.